This is Property Ladder, the show that tells you how to make money from property. For years, houses like these have been deeply unfashionable, but now Art Deco is retro cool. So an Art Deco property in the right location can be a real money spinner. If you get it right. I'd love all the walls to be aqua, and I'd quite like a pink and purple kitchen. Natalie, you spent two and a half thousand pounds on tiles for a downstairs loo. Though the property market seems to be cooling down, there are still areas that offer good returns. Art Deco houses are a niche market, but there are buyers who will pay a premium for their unique character. That premium could be your profit, but only if your renovation reflects the building's original style. This three-bed Art Deco house is in Poole in Dorset. Although it's on a busy road, the house is near the prestigious Sandbanks district, the fourth most expensive place to live in the world. It's a good location and a stunning property. It could be a very profitable development for somebody with the right vision. Natalie Milton has just bought it, and younger sister Tanya has come on board to help her manage the project. Natalie's quite eccentric and loves colour, design, doesn't really have a strong concept of money. When I'm surrounded by colour, it just makes me happy. And Natalie is surrounded by colour. Her one-bedroom flat is a testament to her design ideas. Creating a look that will sell a property is very different to decorating your own home. But Natalie is convinced that with her creative flair, she can make a good profit from her first property development. So she's given up her teaching job, remortgaged her flat and invested all her savings in it. Everything, any money I can um, get my hands on is going into the project. This will be a costly development. The house has been rented out for 10 years and is very run down. But it has the potential to be transformed into a luxury family home. The key room for this kind of development is the kitchen, and they will need at least two top-spec bathrooms. And it's important to be imaginative with the outside space in the garden and roof terrace. The finishes will have to be flawless, and the look should reflect the Art Deco style of the house without going over the top. This is an ambitious first development, and without any income to fall back on, Natalie really needs to make a success of it. So how much did you buy the house for? 375,000. And what are you planning on spending doing it up then? Well, originally we planned to spend 60,000 on doing it up. And what do you reckon that you might be able to sell it for? Fingers crossed. 600. That's the maximum quote that we've had. So if you get that top figure of 600,000, that gives you 165,000 pound profit, which would be great. Yeah. Amazing. If Mind all goes blowing. according to plan. Yeah. 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 So Natalie bought the property for 375,000 pounds and is hoping to spend 60,000 on the renovation. She wants to sell it for 600,000 pounds and make 165,000 pound profit which I would consider an amazing return for this size of investment. That's if she can stick to the budget. I hoped that we would be able to do it for 60,000, but because we want to do it beautifully, I think it will be nearer to 100,000. So I'm on standby to sort of give some of my money to Natalie, just for the time right. being. If and then it needs to be needed. I think it will need it to will be. be needed. Now we're, now we're talking from 60 to 100. They will need my money. Natalie will need my money. I think £100,000 is a more realistic budget. This is a big renovation, and it's a substantial house. On one side of the ground floor, there's a living room with a modern conservatory. On the other side of the house, there are too many small rooms. Next to the dining room, there's a long, narrow kitchen which leads into a little utility room. And there's a small study beyond that. The layout is really dated and the reception rooms feel cramped and dark. At the moment this is the dining room and it's directly next to the kitchen so we hope to 
knock down this wall to make it all one room. So again, it's open plan and it's more like a family room. Natalie is planning to knock down a dividing wall and widen the archway in the kitchen to create a large, bright, L-shaped kitchen living room with the units all along one wall. Making it open plan makes sense. But I think they should keep the units tucked away at one end so that the living area feels separate from the kitchen. That way they'd still have the feeling of space and the extra reception room you'd expect with a four-bedroom house. If you're going to have this open plan, you're better off with most of the kitchen in this area. So I believe in a family house with four bedrooms, you probably want a separate reception space. Would yeah, you not maybe. think? Yeah. What's, what's your plans for a kitchen? I'd love all the walls to be aqua, and I'd quite like a pink and purple kitchen. So pink and purple units, and then... Well, purple wall. units, and inside the units, pink but you'll be able to see through. I have to say, I think there is a danger you might be going just that little bit, bit too, too far. Girly. Because the kitchens and bathrooms are so expensive to change, and I think somebody might actually not buy the house if the kitchen is mm. If you really... would have to completely redo a kitchen, it could put yeah. you up. Yeah. How I much think... is it? Do I have to say? Yeah, go on. Because you haven't said you're going to guess it. You just OK, it's £20,000, which is ridiculous. Mm. It's 23000 Spending almost a quarter of your budget on a pink kitchen sounds to me like it could be a very expensive mistake. <laughs> Upstairs, there are two decent-sized bedrooms, a master suite with a walk-in wardrobe and an awkward little bathroom, which is a real problem. Natalie and Tanya have elaborate and expensive plans for up here, starting with a huge flat roof at the top of the house a typical feature of Art Deco houses. They want to turn it into a roof garden. To access the roof garden, they plan to fit a spiral staircase between the main bathroom and the existing stairs. But this will be a very tight squeeze. Next door, they plan to create an extra bedroom by dividing the long, narrow bedroom in two. And in the master suite, they want to really add impact by putting in new French windows that will open out onto the balcony. This is great. It's like a boat, isn't it? Mm, this is the master bedroom. That's wonderful. We've got access to the balcony here, which is a major feature. These windows are going to be elongated, but hopefully still in the Art Deco style. So is this where your design dreams take shape? My vision for the room is to have it quite minimalist. So um, I'm thinking of quite a grand sort of Art Deco mirror type bed and some sort of grand headboard and uh, a very sort of 30s style mirrored dressing table. Um, so I'm thinking, not minimalist? No, yeah. dressing table and bed. That's you should it. see her bedroom now. <laughs> you have that, no that's idea. So minimalist. You can, oh, and, and bedside tables. But what? that's minimalist, isn't it? I'm not convinced Natalie's vision will suit the style of this house. She needs to try to preserve the Art Deco feel to make the most of her investment in this distinctive property. They've allowed £67,000 for building works and materials, £18,500 for kitchens and bathrooms, £7,000 for decoration, £5,500 for carpets and flooring, £2,000 for the main garden and the roof garden, coming to a grand total of £100,000. Although this is a decent-sized budget, I'm not sure they're spending the money in the right places. They haven't had a building survey done and they haven't got an architect, both of which I would recommend if you're investing nearly half a million pounds in such a unique property. I would also recommend at least a 10% contingency fund, but Natalie and Tanya don't have one of these either. And before they've even started work, they're in trouble. This is actually really deep, isn't it? <laughs> Careful this is a... though. <laughs> oh my goodness. This is, I mean, it's, it's massively pooling out here. This is a really big job. This is going to cost a lot of money to do. And I, I can't see how you can possibly get round that. You're, you're going to be spending at least £20,000 up here. Seriously.
Natalie Milton has given up her job as a teacher, remortgaged her flat in London, and put all her savings into her first development, a three-bedroom Art Deco property in Poole in Dorset. Her sister Tanya, who works in advertising, has also remortgaged, chipped in £40,000, and she's in charge of the budget, while Natalie is in charge of the design. They want to sell the property in three months' time for £600,000, which would give them a £165,000 profit. An amazing return, if they could pull it off. Work has already started and they're making major structural changes, but they haven't got an architect, which means their builders don't have any plans. Well, the demolition's coming along fine, <laughs> but I personally don't think you can really do a job of this scale without having proper plans in your hand. Something that tells you that wall's going, this one's staying, doorways being moved from A to B. I've not seen a single plan for this job yet, no, not one. It's all been word of mouth. Hopefully it'll work out, but it just delays you. Starting a build this size without proper plans is seriously unwise. The money you spend up front on an architect can save you more in the long run. And Natalie and Tanya need to save money. They didn't have a building survey before they took on the property, and I've just told them their roof is in a bad way. They need to know what the damage is. This section here, which you see is very, very spongy, mm -hmm, right? yes. you can see that lifting up and down, mm. that's all rotten through there, and it comes back to here. There's obviously been water penetration there, and the joists that are there, one of the joists you can squeeze with your hand, so it's, it's rotten through. So that oh, section really? will be cut out, and then a new joist put into there. It works out about 200 square metres, so it'll mm -hmm. be a cost of £20,000 <gasps> to do all this job. 20 grand is a massive amount of money for us. I mean, it's a fifth of our budget, so it would basically mean us going back to the drawing board and completely, well, number crunching or juggling around the things that we're going to do. Fixing this is a real priority. Many British buyers are nervous of flat roofs, and these problems could stop the house from selling. But they have no contingency fund, so if they spend £20,000 on the roof, it means they have £20,000 less to spend on the rest of the development. And before the week is out, her builder Mick has found another problem. Natalie wants to put a spiral staircase on the landing between the main bathroom and the stairs, but it won't fit. Well, that's going to be very tight to get a 1400 staircase in there. And it's 1,400, that is the minimum amount of 1400, space required. Yeah, it's a space-saving staircase. It's impossible, isn't it, yeah. as it stands? Are you going to lose the bathroom? Yeah. Yeah, well, that's the bottom line. line. The bottom line is that... The portion of it, anyway. Yeah, you've, you've got to make that smaller. One way or another, that room's got to be made smaller. I need to explain to you about this, you know, the spiral staircase and lo yeah. actually losing this wall, because we couldn't get it in there initially anyway with the measurements. If you're going to lose, once you put the wall back in, 350 mil. That which is, is a lot. This room is just so minuscule anyway, that's going to make quite a big difference, because originally I wanted to have a bath and a separate shower cubicle. But that's it's so not going to happen no, now, is it? It's physically impossible to get both in there. OK, so basically we're now saying that we can either have a bath or a shower. Or a shower, and it would have to be a corner bath, as you had okay. in before. In a family house like this, buyers will expect a substantial bathroom with a decent bath and shower. The bathroom is already too small for this house, and making it even smaller would be a terrible mistake. This is the kind of thing an architect could have found a solution to before the builders came on site. They're now three weeks in, and this project isn't going according to any plan. Their layout doesn't work, the staircase doesn't fit, and they're about to spend £20,000 on the roof. But I think the girls might be missing a trick that could add as much as £60,000 to the value of this house. I'm wondering whether you don't build a magnificent master suite up here with a bathroom and a bedroom with a fully glazed wall overlooking the sea and you'd still have all this room which is still an enormous roof terrace yeah it, but it would be so much money it's expensive there's no question it's expensive i mean i would have thought it would cost the best part of 40 50 000. but i just think this house in this style in this location can carry something that spectacular 
and it's a way to maximise its potential in terms of layout and design and money. Spending £30,000 on top of the £20,000 they are already spending to repair the roof is not as crazy as it may sound. In fact, in this case, if it earns them an extra £60,000, I think it makes perfect sense. Building an extra room on top of your flat roof can add up to 30% to the overall living space. And remember, you don't have to put a bedroom up here. If your house has limited reception space, an office or study might be more appropriate. But at around £800 a square metre, roof extensions don't come cheap. Roof gardens are a cheaper alternative and a particularly good investment in urban areas where there's little outside space. Whatever work you decide to do, keep the reins on your budget. Don't spend more than you'll get back in your sale price. And schedule carefully. If you require planning permission, you need to factor in at least an eight-week wait. So first stop for Natalie is the local planning department. It's true to say that the, the house has had a number of planning applications on it, submitted on it in the past, and uh, the neighbours did raise objections to the use of uh, the roof terrace and also various additions that were proposed. The former owner of the property wanted to add this what he termed a roof shelter on top of the roof, and that required planning consent. Okay. But we did grant planning consent, subject to a number of conditions. Okay, so that's all quite good news. Well, I think so. I think what you want to do, in essence, is, is quite acceptable to us. Um, I just need a little bit of clarification exactly as to what you want to do. This is a huge bonus for Natalie and Tanya. The project could have been held up for months while they waited for planning permission. But now they have options. They can use the roof as a garden, or if they can find the extra cash, they can build themselves a fantastic fifth bedroom with an ensuite. While the builders go to work on making the roof watertight, I want to show Natalie and Tanya how spectacular the space up here could be. This Art Deco house is a perfect example of what can be done with a large flat roof. This is the most spectacular part of the whole house. This sumptuous room. So light and bright, so isn't it? Oh my God, it's amazing. Your roof terrace has the potential of being like this. Oh my goodness, what an amazing garden. Obviously it's much, much bigger, this roof. But actually in terms of this building, it's a, it's a very good way of using the roof terrace and using the views in you know, actually what we have in this country, which is kind of miserable weather a lot. And if you built something like this on your roof terrace, I think that's the reason that someone will buy the house and that's the reason they'll pay the extra money. This house is a fantastic example of how much difference the roof room could make. And I'm hoping the inspiration doesn't stop there. Because Natalie should be thinking about incorporating at least some of these ideas into her design. And though that means keeping the interior simple and uncluttered, it certainly doesn't have to be dull. Oh, God. This kind of sumptuous, sumptuous, but it's still quite simple in terms of design. See, this is sort of more decadent and luxurious, isn't it? What it's doing is it's using colour in a very strong way, but actually the rest of the room, there's very little going on. I actually think this is a really cool room. So, a positive reaction to some of the design ideas. Maybe I'm getting through. This is absolutely deco in its in its kind of purest form. Oh, period. wow, even the sofas. It's very striking. Yeah. How would you feel about this being the interior of your development rather than your planned one? It so goes against my whole vision, if I'm honest. This interior would be more appropriate for the exterior of your house yeah. in terms of architecture. This is one extreme. You're at the other end of the scale, and maybe there is a marriage of the two. And Compromise. Two. Possibly that's the There's best. a word. <gasps> well, she said it. <laughs> <laughs> Back at the site, the builders are making good progress. The rotten timbers being replaced, ready for the new rubber membrane to go on. It's What's been done to the roof? That whole new. We've put new boarding on there completely. Over the whole top? Yeah. So there's nothing rotten? No. Those boards aren't new? Those are existing. 
Those were already there. OK, but on top of that, on you've top put of that, something... We've put three-quarter inch ply to give it a firmer base. Because so now there teams... should never be any more leaking? No. Natalie and Tanya now have to make a decision about the roof extension. But first, they need to sit down and go through their budget, which, despite Tanya's best efforts, they haven't done for weeks. I'm just slightly worried about the cost of things. Well, I'm very worried about it. And I'm trying to say to Natalie, OK, we're spending more money on the roof. What can we, what can we kind of take out of the plan? But I'm trying to get her to sit down and, and really calculate everything. But instead of sitting down with Tanya and talking about the budget, Natalie has hijacked Mick the Builder to talk through her design ideas. A look she was working on long before she bought this house. I was thinking of making the stairs turquoise. A turquoise staircase. Mm. And then there's this lovely lady who hand makes these tiles and they're, they're jewelled. They look like jewels. So I was thinking of maybe just having one layer above the sink and just one layer around the bath, so you get the effect, but don't feel the price so much. Mm. And, <laughs> and I've got some lovely ideas, Natalie. But it will take more than lovely ideas to make this development profitable. Natalie does need to get realistic about what she should and what she shouldn't spend the money on. It's absolutely critical that Tanya gets Natalie and the budget under control. I'm hugely worried, hugely worried about the money we're spending. But we have really thought long and hard about putting the room on the roof terrace and it does seem, as Sarah said, like it's almost crying out for one. So we are doing that and then it will make the house even more spectacular and we can ask for even more money. And so the only way I see us saving money now is on the decorating. So no doubt Natalie and I will come to blows over that. Because she won't want to um, compromise on any of it. And I feel that we will have to. Tanya's right to be worried. Managing the budget is a critical part of any development. If you overspend, you should be sure that you're adding more value to your property. Otherwise, you're just eating into your profit. If the overspend isn't adding value, then you must find savings elsewhere. But by the time Natalie and Tanya finally go through their budget, things have got totally out of hand. Natalie, you spent £2,500 on tiles for a downstairs loo, an under-the-stairs loo, £2,500. When you see them, they're Natalie's... so mind-blowing that you just think, God, I so understand why you spent that. These tiles... £1,000, where are they for? Well, that's for the master bedroom en suite and they're handmade dual tiles. There's 32 of them. £1,000 is for 32 tiles? I think you've gone mad, Natalie. Have you already bought them? So for two, I'd like to say rooms, but they're tiny Tiny toilet and a very small and sweet, you spent three and a half thousand pounds on tiles. And then this says the lounge wallpaper, 245 pounds. It is, it's 245 pounds a roll, but we're only... A just, roll? I've only ordered, oh my but God, I've only Natalie, one. have you gone insane? But that's just one roll, we only need one roll. Originally we wanted to spend 60 grand. I know that was unreasonable, so really we started at 100 grand. And now already, and we haven't by any means put everything in it. We're on like 180. I know that does sound quite extortionate. But so where are we getting the money from? That's what I'm saying. When it comes to jumping in at the deep end of property developing, Natalie Milton takes some beating. She's given up her job, remortgaged her flat, and put all her savings into this three-bedroom Art Deco property in Poole in Dorset. Her sister Tanya has also remortgaged and invested £40,000. Between them, they've spent almost half a million pounds on the project, and they're £80,000 overspent. But instead of making some major savings, Natalie's trying to get more money together. 
She's borrowing more, and now she's decided to rent out her apartment and move back home with her mother. Tanya is supposed to be reining her in, but as the house takes shape, even she's starting to think they can still make a profit. We have literally had so many people saying it's going to be worth so much more than we think it is, which I obviously take to heart and get really excited about. Natalie's a lot more cautious. I've heard 900, but Natalie will kill me for saying that. Some people have said that. I was looking on the internet the other day about this um, international fin financier, and he just goes around the world buying Art Deco houses. That's his hobby, and he's absolutely minted. So. You know, you just need someone to fall in love with it like we did. Natalie and Tanya are not thinking like developers. It's a classic mistake to think if you overspend, you'll make it back when you sell the property. You need to keep an eye on the market throughout the development and check what's going on. The ceiling price for this kind of property on this road in Poole is actually around £650,000 and there's no sign of any upward movement in the market. So they shouldn't be over-ambitious about their asking price. And if they want people to pay a premium for the property because of its style, then they need to understand how to make the most of it. But I'm worried that Natalie's vision has little to do with the Art Deco look that could get them a premium for this house. Art Deco was about bold, angular lines, it fused ancient symbols with modern concepts to create a simple, clean look. Nothing like what Natalie has in mind. Now this, this is very you. <laughs> this is oh. my all-time favourite shop. And you can understand why. It's full of very beautiful, very feminine and mostly very bright objects, which have next to nothing to do with creating the Art Deco look Natalie should be thinking about for her house. Look at that chandelier. Is that the kind of thing you're thinking of having in the house? Yeah, I just Even adore it. And um, probably not as big and probably not those colours. Sort of that probably not red. And sort of more pinks and lilacs. <laughs> Although developing shouldn't be about making a boring cream box, I think it's also a real mistake to get too personal when you're creating a look. Because if people don't like what you've done, and it's so in your face, they probably won't be able to see through it to the property underneath. In terms of development, I think that there's a lot of men, and probably some women, who would be very alienated by quite how feminine it is, and that is 50% of your market. Well, I would find it very hard to steer away from this whole look because this is what I just love. I think the key is, is there's no doubt it's gorgeous, but you just need to use a bit of restraint and not take it too far. The danger is that if Natalie won't restrain her ideas, then she may create a property that's very difficult to sell. Oh, wow. See, I love that mirror. See, that's a piece of deco design which is absolutely appropriate for your house. Much more so than the feminine frills and twills, really. I think that if you can stick to more simple lines, you're going to be safer in your house. I mean, your style is more is more, and I think with this house, probably less is more. Although Natalie's been working on her design ideas for years, I'm hoping she can tone them down enough to suit this house. Nine weeks in and the project is really moving along. With the roof now weather tight, the plasterers can move in. While upstairs, work starts on the new room on the roof. But like the rest of the development, none of Natalie's ideas are ever straightforward. She's decided to build a curved front wall. While it will look great, it makes the construction much more complicated. Especially when her builders are still working without any plans. Natalie seems to be just making it up as she goes along. So it shouldn't really come as any great surprise that ten weeks in, there's been another radical change. Oh, my word, the bathroom's gone. Oh, it's it all changed up here. It's about three times. This house is too small for Natalie and Tanya's big ideas. They wanted to fit a spiral staircase onto a small landing, but to do so they would have had to eat into the bathroom, so they came up with a radical solution. 
they've decided to lose the old bathroom completely and convert one of the bedrooms into a new, more spacious bathroom. So we decided to make the back room a bathroom and then make this landing a feature and it was sort of really show off the spiral staircase and everyone's a winner other than the fact we have lost a bedroom. But the but bedroom we've was so the bedroom upstairs. Yeah. I totally understand why you did that and it does in many ways make sense, but you haven't actually gained a bedroom. You've still got the same number of bedrooms as you had before. Losing a bedroom is a major decision. As a rule of thumb, I'd say that in any development, you need at least one bathroom for every three bedrooms. And a big family house like this will always need a big family bathroom. So here, it's the right thing to do. But Natalie and Tanya now need to make sure that the new room on the roof is more than just a bedroom, like the one they used to have downstairs. So you're going to have glass all the way around? Well, we're not going to have it all the way around because then it will look a bit like a conservatory. So we're going to have French windows there and there. And then concrete, and then we're going to get two pieces of curved glass here. God, that's going to cost a fortune, isn't it? It is, but we wanted it to mirror the um, French windows in the master bedroom on the flight below. So from downstairs, um, it just follows the whole curvature of the house. The girls must make sure they're spending their money in ways that will add value to the property. And whilst curved glass is lovely, it shouldn't be their priority. The ideal use of this space up here would be to have a bedroom and a bathroom and access onto the terrace. It just seemed wrong to squash a bathroom in and make this room look small just to fit in a bedroom bathroom. We just thought it would be better to have a larger room. You can actually fit a shower room into a metre, can't you? 1.2 square? Can you? Yeah, if you design it beautifully. I mean, you only need a little loo and a little basin. Half of me just thinks, oh my God, we weren't going to change anything else. I do think it would be worth having that ensuite up here. The danger is if you don't have that, you only just get the £25,000 back that you've invested. They now have three weeks to go and they're making good progress. The spiral staircase is being put in place. The curved windows are being fitted to the room on the roof. And after a quick rethink, an ensuite is being fitted up there too. Outside, most of the old render has been stripped off. Re-rendering the property is one of the most important jobs in the whole development. It will make the house look smarter and keep out the damp too. But although the job's nearly done, work has ground to a halt. The only way to access and work on Natalie and Tanya's back wall is in the neighbour's garden. But stripping the ivy and render off is a messy job and the neighbours aren't happy. We've got the blue tits at the moment with the babies and the robins and uh, I want to enjoy the garden and we want to be able to use it. And if obviously all the rendering's taken off, that means we can't use the garden. Any work will have to wait until September. Although Natalie and Tanya might not like it, the neighbours are right. All nesting birds are protected by law and can't be disturbed until the chicks have safely flown the nest, which means a potential delay of three months. But that isn't the neighbour's only concern. Obviously, the bathroom and uh, shower room at the end there and the big window, that all had obscure glass in and they've replaced it with clear glass. So that takes away the you know, privacy we've had in the garden. And we're going to feel as though we're under a spyglass. I'm not saying we are, but it would feel that way. Disputes with neighbours can be a nightmare, and the golden rule is to make sure you avoid them at all costs. She came round once, once with the builder yes. and said, I, I understand you're not happy. And that was it. I think it's been as long as mine's all right. That's all right. I just want my little house to be developed and everything my way. That's their attitude. That's their attitude. And it's not long before things take a turn for the worse. We received a letter last week from the neighbours, um, neighbours telling us, neighbour solicitor, telling us that they wanted to take legal action against us because we were trespassing on their property. And the way we're trespassing on their property is simply by opening our window.
Originally they wanted all our windows to be frosted and as you can see this room isn't the brightest, lightest room as it because is. Because of their trees. They obviously don't like the glass because we're overlooking their garden and that is unfortunate but that is the way these houses are. Whoever's right or wrong, neighbour disputes can totally wreck your plans. And although you do have legal rights which allow you to make essential repairs to your property, Fighting for this through the courts costs time and money. And to make matters worse, the rendering isn't the only job that involves being on their neighbour's land. Our drains are on their property, so we need access because we're about to install three new bathrooms. So they could hold things up in a big way, and that is the last thing we need. When developing, it's critical to try to get on with your neighbours. They put up with the noise and mess you're making, so you have to try to keep them on side. When we come to sell it, if you have a dispute with your neighbour, it has to be stated on the freehold. It's going to make it a lot harder to sell the house on. I'm absolutely fuming. Natalie and Tanya are now four months into a half million pound development. They need to get this project finished and on the market as soon as possible. But unless they can resolve the problems with their neighbours, work will just grind to a halt. After almost five months renovating an Art Deco property in Dorset, Natalie Milton and her sister Tanya are finally seeing Natalie's ideas take shape. It looks amazing! So amazing. Though they haven't managed to render the back of the house yet, their neighbours have allowed them to work on the plumbing and drains. But Natalie's constant changes and the additional work to the roof means they are almost two months behind schedule. I think the hardest things for the builders was coping with me. I do. Despite having amazing builders who've done the whole project without seeing a single plan, Natalie has found the project a huge challenge. I feel excited for seconds and then so stressed and psychotic, it's just quite ridiculous. Anyone that wants to do property developing, all I can say to them is good luck and have some Valium. Five months after starting work on this fantastically ambitious development, it's finally finished. The garden really works well, and outside, the property looks spectacular. But inside, it's a different story. Opening up the archways has transformed the lounge into a brighter and more spacious room. But with the murals, the flocked wallpaper at £245 a roll, and all the colourful furniture, it's so busy in here, it doesn't look any bigger. <laughs> Goodness, so you um, you kind of enjoyed this room clearly. This yeah. is one of the loveliest rooms. The structure and core of the house is really wonderful, but I think perhaps in here the Art Deco's kind of got lost. Are you pleased with it? I am. Where is it? It's all about me. <laughs> I think there's quite a lot of people who would be quite alienated by this. The thing about this house is everyone has an opinion and that's true. to me that's better than Oh yes, that's all. Remember we are trying to sell it. It's <laughs> slightly <laughs> there is that issue that that maybe it would be good to to make a profit on it. The new kitchen dining room is a great space and it's given them an extra reception room. But again, the mixture of styles is a little overwhelming. The turquoise and lilac kitchen is beautifully finished, but it's very feminine and it could put off buyers. Oh, this is a great improvement, isn't it? Wonderful. Yeah. Do you know, I have to say, whilst I wouldn't exactly call it conventional, your <laughs> kitchen, it's great. It all flows into one and it works, doesn't it? Yeah. And it's usable. And the colours in here, it's very brave, but works really well. And so how much did the kitchen end up costing? I mean, it is magnificent. Not much. Oh, it wasn't it, too much? It came it, to about 32,500. I mean, there must have been a point with your spending where you thought, well, 
if we don't make a profit, who cares? The Downstairs Loo is a perfect example. The key to successful developing is to spend money in the right areas. Two and a half thousand on tiles for a loo under the stairs seems a tad extravagant. The front hall continues Natalie's turquoise theme. The polished steel banisters are stunning and Natalie's colourful designs calm down as you move upstairs. The landing is spacious, but it lacks the impact to justify losing a bedroom. And the spiral staircase is disappointing. But the large family bathroom is a real success. And all the bedrooms on this floor are bright and airy. Especially the master suite, with its new full-length windows walk-in wardrobe and ensuite, complete with handmade bejeweled tiles which were an indulgence at a thousand pounds. This room's big selling point are the French doors that lead onto the little balcony. Up on the roof the new extension is the icing on the cake. This is one investment that will more than pay for itself when it comes to selling. This is brilliant. What's the... Oh, lovely. Following your advice, Sarah? You're so wise. Oh, gorgeous. Roll over the south of France. I this know, it's like wonderful. being on holiday. It really is, it isn't here. it? And what's really great is still by using, by building a roof room, we still managed to keep a substantial roof terrace. But it would have been a crime not to put something up Absolutely. here. Absolutely. I mean, this is going to be the room that sells the house, I think. The property is spectacular, but it's come at a price. Natalie and Tanya started off hoping to spend £60,000, but after getting quotes from builders, this leapt to 100000 They allowed 67000 for the building work, but this didn't include all their materials and ended up costing them £102,000. They planned to spend 18,500 on the kitchen and bathrooms, but ended up spending more than double that at an incredible 40,847 pounds. They allowed 7,000 pounds for decoration, but with all Natalie's extravagant finishes, this shot up to a crazy 32,370 pounds. Carpets and flooring went from 5,500 to 10,300. They hoped to spend just 2,000 pounds on the garden and roof terrace, but it ended up costing over 9,000 pounds. The unforeseen repairs to the roof and the new master suite came in at 50,300 pounds, bringing their total spend on the project to a colossal 259,000 pounds, including fees over four times their original budget. Even though this is a high-end development, I think they could have turned it around for half that much and still ended up with a spectacular property. So £259,000, that's over a quarter of a million pounds. Golly, I think I'm going to throw up. <laughs> oh, no. Your role was to, to manage the budget. How do you think it went quite so out of control? Um, I think we just fell in love with the house and it's pretty hard to control Natalie. Natalie's really? spending. A house like this, it just wouldn't do it justice to just do it on the cheap. It kind of had to be flamboyant. Natalie bought the property for £375,000. She spent 244,894 on the renovations. Her fees will bring this up to 259,000. If she sells the property for her original target price of 600,000 pounds, she will actually lose 34,000 pounds. But Natalie and Tanya are convinced that the property is so unique that they will be able to sell it for closer to 750,000. Let's just hope the agents agree. The outside looks super. It's like the estate isn't it? It's nice. It's a young person's. I like the space that's been used here with your dining area and you've got like a snug area. 
quite like this, actually. If I could have this. It's just the colours, I think, are a little bit vivid. What is the aim here? Is this yeah. for personal pleasure or is it to sell? Yeah, this is nice. Very unusual. Wow. Now, I love this. Wow, no, this is very nice. The road is noisy and it will put a lot of people off. What a terrific area. I mean, this is going to be the main, one of the main selling tools of the property. I think potential buyers might be put off by some of the colour schemes used on the ground floor. Somebody's going to love it or they're going to hate it and until you do the viewings you, you won't know. I think it would probably go on the market at about 650 and, and hope to achieve as close to that as possible. I think that you should get 600. My figure would be £550,000. They have valued it at 550, 600 and 650. I mean, at 550, you would be making a substantial loss on this house. 84,000 pounds. At 600, you'd be making a 34,000 pound loss, and that's the average of the valuations. Well, I have every faith that it would sell for more, and I'm so willing to hold on to it. But developments are not for holding on to, they are for selling. Unhappy with the valuations, Natalie and Tanya have decided to put the property on the market for £750,000. Convinced that if the right person comes along, they'll be willing to pay the premium for this very individual property. Oh my God! It's like a shrine! It's true. That would all have to go. <laughs> It's a bit of a mixture in here, isn't it? A bit of yeah. 70s as well as Art Deco. And then you've got this purple everywhere. Oh, wow! Oh, my God! Oh, my God! Oh, my God. <laughs> a real boudoir. <laughs> yes. Oh, I like this. This is really nice in here. It's a bit noisy, though, isn't it? Mm -hmm. She's done some of it so well. That is fantastic. The house has got better as we've gone around. Yeah. We are tempted because it's because of the beauty of the building itself. Put a lot of money and time and effort into it, really, yeah. It's just they don't all work. The bathrooms we like, the kitchen we don't. It's blinded you with what she's done with the chandeliers and all the, the fussiness, because mm. it's, it's in direct contrast with the original Art Deco bits of the building. Unfortunately for Natalie and Tanya, none of the initial viewers put in an offer on the property. I mean, sitting here and looking around the house, you know, I'm, just, I'm so proud and I absolutely love it, but it has been <coughs> pure hell. Really? Yeah. Would you do it again? No. Why is that? It can be quite exhausting and draining and I wouldn't do it again. Right. But you would do it again? Yeah, possibly. Nothing as large as this project. I wouldn't do another one with her. Really? <laughs> <laughs> no. Although a special property like this can earn you a premium, there is a downside too. It will only appeal to a niche section of the market. The trouble with what Natalie and Tanya have created is that they've made a niche market even smaller. And finding a buyer prepared to pay a premium could be a challenge.